welcome back to the low channel anyway for those of you who are just new here my name is joanne and first and foremost i would like to thank every one of you all of the lovies who continuously supported us our simple vlogs and for posting and sharing our vlogs in facebook and placing your comments thank you very much for your lovely thoughts and to the 300 and 400 um level up it was amazing i hope that we continuously grow bigger and together so anyway in this video we are going to have an impromptu interview with this special person that i specifically wanted because i know that you will be able to shed light an inspiration um or maybe justify our thoughts on those people who are actually wanting to decide on their career path and discover how passion works in one's profession so i hope that you'll be one with us and commit to watching this simple vlog until the end enjoy lovies I work for the state of California, the California Department of Fish and Wildlife. I am a, technically I'm a laboratory technician to animal pathology, but I'm also a sea otter biologist with the state and I also work with oiled animal rehabilitation. So it's kind of a long list of things I do. Um, and I got through that through school. Um, as an undergrad, I studied marine biology and I also volunteered with a group on campus that took care of uh, dolphins, otters, sea lions, um, and also helped with different um, physiology um, projects that they were working on. And through them, that's how I met people with the state and that's how I got into that job. the ocean and I would also think in the Philippines you're near water all the time it's so beautiful you have great coral reefs and the diversity in um, the ocean so I've always loved the water and I loved animals so I kind of combined the two and decided that marine, bi marine biology was for me and I knew since middle school that I was going to go to school to be a marine biologist and I know a lot of people kind of that's their childhood dream when they kind of let it go as they get older I just really stuck with it and I knew I was going to make my career out of it I'm not sure if I had any one in particular. Uh, I know my parents really stressed education, so I knew since I wanted to be a marine biologist, um, I didn't know specifically I was going to study sea otters, but I knew I wanted to be working with animals in the ocean. I just knew school was important, so I wanted to make them proud and I wanted to do well in school um, and get into college and study that way. But I just always watched um, ocean shows on TV, different animal programs, and kind of um, read things in school and uh, looked at different um, program, college programs, and um, that's how I decided to go to UCSC and kind of stick with um, marine biology. Um, because that passion will give you your drive to succeed so if I it's I think it is important um, if I didn't have the passion to do this I would have maybe switched and done something else it's definitely not an easy job it's not something you can find easily I have to kind of stick to certain areas to be able to do what I do I can't just go to the middle middle America and find a uh, sea otter job or um, so it takes work it's just because the job um, options are limited um, and to start up you just kind of have to work your way up a lot harder compared to other jobs um, so you definitely need um, that drive to be a marine biologist Even if you 
you don't love your job, there's aspects of every job you can find in there that you do like. Um, say, I know there's a, my whole family, they're all nurses. Um, and even if you don't like being nursing, maybe you like dealing, working with people, or maybe you like figuring out what people are sick with, or just kind of finding the silver lining. Um, and especially if you can't get out of your situation, you have to try to make the best out of it. If not, you need to change your situation and go back to school or go to a trade school to see what you want to do. Um, so uh, I think you can find something in a job that you don't like. You just have to kind of work at it. and I don't think you can really appreciate success without any kind of failure um, not that I want people to fail um, I didn't get to all the colleges I want to get into I didn't get every internship I applied for I didn't get every job I applied for so you do have to work and you have to work through that failure it makes you a stronger person makes you a, a better professional makes you be able to understand um, to the work ethic and how to get to be a successful person. Um, it's hard if you're given things, it, you don't really appreciate it. So um, that struggle is important, not that I want people to struggle, um, but it just makes you a better person. And I appreciate where I am in my career because of what I had to go through in the process, all the schooling, the volunteering, um, meeting other people, working with other projects. So it, I think makes you a better person career-wise. Oddly, of um, I kind of sign kind of like an old soul. I, I've kind of always known I wanted. I've been always been pretty organized, so I've always had my life planned up through college. So I knew at a young age I was going to call go to college. I knew I was going to study marine biology. I knew I was going to leave San Diego for college, and I did all of that. Um, it wasn't until after I finished my undergrad that I wasn't completely sure what I wanted to do, um, and then I kind of. Um, called around and that's why it's great to network while you're in college because um, when you have a great network people will let you know when jobs are opening um, and especially if they know you and they know how well you work and your work ethic um, people will let you know when jobs are opening and that's how I kind of fell into the job I have now um, I moved back home after school after UCSC I moved back to San Diego I didn't know exactly what I wanted to do um, I worked um, at a local organization for a little while, but it wasn't the right fit for me. So I moved back to Santa Cruz because I had a great network there. Um, and while I was there, there was a job opening that um, a colleague told me about. And that's how I got into my office now. So I worked my way up. I started as a scientific aide helping um, the projects they had. And through there, I kind of worked my way all the way up to where I am now. And I'm still working my way up. So it's, I still have room to grow myself, and it's great that I can, um, even at my age, at, at 37, I can still uh, um, kind of go up through my career. I'm not done yet, so um, it, my plans are still working out, so I don't think it ever ends. A very loyal person a friendship wise I need to career wise I would prefer to stay with this organization forever um, just because I've been with this group um, organization um, in Santa Cruz the uh, Fish and Wildlife in Santa Cruz since 2005 so I've been there for almost 14 years um, I built a great network I worked on a lot of projects I have a real good feel of what we're doing and um, um, especially when we work with oil spill response. I've been preparing for this for the last 14 years, so I'm ready to go if needed. Um, so I would prefer to stay. Of course, you don't know what's going to happen in the future, but I would love to stay with my current job and just work my way up. Um, it's nice to be able to, um, it's, and it's nice to be able to want to stay if you like your job. Um, I know some people leave because they don't like their coworkers, they don't like the work. Um, it's nice that I, I like both. I love my coworkers and I love what I'm doing. So it's nice to be able to want to stay. So there's so 
many ways to do that. Um, I've been taking online classes through my work um, to kind of get more experience. We work with this Access computer database that kind of contains all of our scientific um, data. So I take online classes to kind of look up, um, uh, learn new updates on it, um, how to do the like coding in the background, how to troubleshoot. Um, there's always, like online classes, you can take community college classes, sometimes your work will pay for that. You can even get your graduate degree, that's what I did. I did that 2016-2018. Um, um, I was working and getting that at the same time, so I didn't need it for my job, but I wanted it for myself and it would help me grow professionally. Um, so there's so many things you can do. You can just just read books on topics that you like. So there's so many things you can do. Watch, there's so many YouTube videos and tutorials. Like There's so many things and it's, it's good to keep your um, brain and your interest moving so you don't kind of get bored in your life. never say never you never know um, I my graduate degree was in microbiology but it's obviously I was studying a bacteria in a marine mammal so it's still marine biology related um, so I if that suited me or if I change my mind I could always maybe go that route um, I do like what I'm doing now just because it does combine a little bit about biology microbiology rehabilitation um, outreach um, research so I, I kind of get a little bit of everything of what I'm doing now um, but I wouldn't say never I, if an opportunity comes around and it was too good to pass up I wouldn't say no you don't want to limit yourself um, because you're stuck to a location or you just like the people you work with too much you want to be able to make sure you can grow yourself I don't have to work over too much overtime unless there is an oil spill emergency so that's nice um, I always try to make sure I find um, time to myself um, I so I like to work out a lot um, when I have time it's just kind of physical and mental health um, I always go out with my husband and friends you just have to you have to find a little bit of time if not you just you just get stressed out too much and stress kind of affects everything you just have to you just have to find a little pocket in the day. If it's an hour at night or on the weekends or just one day a week, you have to, have to schedule a date night. You just have to do it. Family is always first. I, I love my career. I've always been career driven, but if you had to choose one your family always has to come first so uh, hopefully I don't ever have to make that decision so but definitely my family would have to come before my career you can always lose faith in anything I in life, you can lose hope if you are constantly facing rejection from jobs or schools or if you're dating. That's that's always tough. It just kind of depends on how you work through that and how you grow. Um, I guess I do since I work with animals, I see it, the destruction we're doing to the environment and I see how much we can change or how little we are changing it or how slow change is happening. So it's disheartening to see that since it affects um, the animals I work with it affects it actually affects everyone indirectly, but um, and directly. But it is disheartening. But if people like me stop working on it, then what's going to happen? No, nothing's going to get done. Um, so you're going to have to kind of channel that disappointment and trying to work through that and make something greater out of it. Um, the 
California state system, it's great. I have a retirement system. I have health care. Um, I have a decent salary, although I live in a very expensive city. Um, um, otherwise, yeah, I'm fine. I don't have, compared to other people, I don't have to worry about where my food's coming from. I don't have to worry about rent. I don't have to worry about um, just expenses. Uh, the only thing is with housing nowadays, <laughs> it's really hard to even buy a house. So that kind of is the only downside, but I, I have nothing to complain about. So. I would recommend uh, my career path or my job for those that have always wanted to do it. If this is not your passion and you don't have the the dedication and the willingness to go through that I you need to find something that you're willing to sacrifice something for this is something you want to do for the rest of your career and I don't know how old I'll be when I retire I'll probably be 80 so you're gonna have to do this for like what 50 60 years you're gonna have to really love what you're doing and you don't want to be in a job every day or waiting to go home um, so if there's uh, people, young people, especially Filipinos, I, and you're interested in the environment, and especially with kind of global warming nowadays and climate change, I, I, I guess I would recommend it. Um, just because we need all the help we can get. And being in where the Philippines is, it's such a beautiful area. Um, as again, you have the coral reefs, you have all of the the sea life, the marine life, the marine, marine animals over there, marine birds, you have, um, we need all the help we can get to preserve everything so we can last for future generations. So I am encouraging it if you really want to help and if you really love the ocean and the animals and um, kind of helping the environment too. with a couple responses um, back in 2007 uh, we had this mystery event in the Santa Cruz area end up being a harmful algae algal bloom that was kind of fouling the coat the feathers of birds so we were in the process of getting them through the whole washing process washing them drying them making sure the feathers got back to normal and releasing them so that was a great beginning step to my career that was early on um, and then a couple years ago actually a few years ago I w helped with the refugio oil spill that happened in Santa Barbara um, uh, down south from San Diego so I was able to help with that spill um, and so many animals and birds got affected by that spill and so it's nice to get together with like-minded people to come together and try to clean up the environment and help the animals since humans caused it it's nice that humans can come in and help um, remedy it as well I think it'd be great if society can get together and kind of work for a solution of what we can do in the future how we can manage our resources better how we can make them last longer um, how we can manage our plastics and our single-use items um, we just kind of I think everyone's not kind of getting together and collectively I'm worried that by the time we all get together it might be too late so I'm hoping we can all work together all different parties especially America it's mainly Republicans and Democrats we also have independents but I just hope we can all come together someday and to kind of find a good resolution to all the problems we're having now that hopefully if we can start them now we can help fix that for the future I think something that everyone can do, because not everyone works in research and data, um, one thing you can do is just your everyday life. What do you use? You can bring a reusable bottle. If you get coffee every day, bring your own cup. If you drink water, bring your own bottle. Um, uh, if you 
buy shampoos all the time, buy the bigger container if you buy the same one, and just trying to lessen our use. Um, things We're just so used to this easy lifestyle of things being disposable. I think that's the easiest thing to fix right now. Well, it's it's been going on for a very long time. Um, we just, as a, I think as a society, we've gotten used to this kind of easy use of everything that we don't um, trying to explain it. I, I like to watch old movies and how back in the day they had everything. They had their own, when they went camping, they brought everything and they washed it and they brought it all back. Not our disposable things that we use once, we throw away, or people are just so lazy that when they go out to the beach and they hang out, they leave all their trash after a holiday. You go visit the beach the day after a huge three day weekend and people just leave their trash everywhere. It's kind of as if there's no common decency or courtesy anymore. So I think if we can fix that mindset, things would hopefully start to get a little better. But I kind of watch what you use, not only just the single use plastics, kind of watch how long we shower. I know sometimes it's nice to sit in the shower, it's nice and warm, but that's a lot of water we're using all the time. If you brush your teeth and you just leave the faucet on while you're just brushing your teeth, that's good water going down to waste. Or just driving, it's nice if you can carpool if you can, or buy a better fuel efficient vehicle, and I know they're making better ones nowadays, which is which is great, and they're making um, charging stations more accessible for other people. So I think we're working towards there, but it's hard to have businesses all think that way because it's not really the money-making aspect of it. I know people need money to live, but sometimes the finances override logic and the environment. So it's, we need to find some kind of middle ground that everyone can be on board with. I think there are. I'm, I'm maybe I'm being hopeful, and I know there's a lot of the younger generations that are actually more vocal about that than maybe people around our age. And I think because they're living in the world that we've all created, which is not the best. So I'm hopeful that these these younger kids coming up are actually going to be the real um, catalyst for change. Um, I'm really happy of. I'm, I'm happy with what I'm seeing. There's a lot, of, a lot of teenagers, even the young kids, are actually being very vocal about um, the environment. So it's, it's great to see that. Well, I am specifically a sea otter biologist, but my undergrad is marine biology, which I think is still a good um, major just because you can learn about a uh, very aspects. You learn about oceanography, about marine mammals, marine botany, marine conservation, um, marine birds. You can you can learn about all the different things and through that kind of those classes and that major you can maybe find out what you want to specialize specifically in. And for me, after taking all those great classes, I knew I still wanted to work with marine mammals specifically. Um, and that still ties into environment, especially with otters, just because they're good indicators of the health of the ocean. So if otters aren't doing well, it's kind of a sign that the environment there um, isn't doing well as well um, either. So I think it's still a good profession, and I'm encouraging people, if even if they don't want to do that for their undergrad, just to read up about it, just to be knowledgeable about it. You can pick up a book, you can watch videos. Um, uh, there's also, yeah, great websites to read about different aspects of marine biology. So it's such a big topic. It's not w one thing in particular. Um, so I think that's kind of a big thing people misunderstand. They don't know what it is about marine biology. They might think it's all dolphins or just the ocean. So there's so many as aspects of it that um, until you kind of look at the different subjects in it. So I mean, I encourage people to kind of look into it themselves. Okay. Do you think following your heart or your instincts is better than following what your parents tell you? <laughs> it, it may depend.
then um, I think you need a little bit of both. Usually your parents have your best interest in mind, but sometimes they have their own interest in mind. So you're gonna have to take their advice and kind of tailor that to mm. how you feel and what you know that what you wanna do. Um, so it's always good to listen to your parents, especially if I become a mother and I watch this, I wanna say yes, listen to your parents. But um, growing up, I, I kind of listened to my own intuition and my own advice and kind of listened to what they did or what they suggest and also talking with other respected adults and other friends you kind of have to take everything together um it's always good especially if you're a ch you're younger you need, you need that extra advice to help guide you but you don't want to listen to everything everyone someone else is saying to to tell you what to do with your own life so you need a little bit of everything new to be organized. I've always known that because then it kind of helped organize your entire life and also to be nice to others. Um, it's the world is tough already just you want to help each other out just be nice. Just be nice. Okay how about in school? In school obviously still organized, organized, organized. That's the story of my life. Um, organized you need to have that drive. If you don't then school can get boring or can get dull or you it's not big it's not a priority anymore so um, what I've learned through school is you really have to work at it I know some people can be naturally smart um, and I knew even as in high school and I really had to study I had to like really pay attention um, so I through as a kid through school I learned to kind of be dedicated um, how about love Love, aww. Um, <laughs> love, you want to be happy together, you want to be loyal. Um, and as for um, the most important thing I've learned, with, you have communication, obviously, is the most important. Besides the love, it's communication. You guys, the two of you, need to be able to communicate your, your thoughts. Your, whenever you're happy, you're sad, angry, you can't bottle that up. Just good communication. In profession, also you need to be professional in profession. Um, uh, marine biology. Obviously, there's a lot of people that work in marine, marine biology, but ironically, it is a small little world, and people know each other. You know someone that knows someone, so you don't want to burn any bridges. So professionally, even if you may not like someone personally, you need to be able to work with someone professionally um, on projects. You need to be able just to be courteous. Um, get your work done. Um, doesn't mean you have to be best friends, but you don't you don't want to be mean. Um, that will come back. So do not burn bridges. Father. Oh, my father. What I learned from my father, I I knew how much he worked and how hard he worked for us. So I instilled hard work. He he came to this new country. He was in the navy. He worked. He was away from us, so he had to work long hours not even near his family so that must have been hard but he was dedicated to our life and helping our life making our life better that um, that's what I got instilled love and um, hard work mother my mother oh what I learned from my mom um, don't be a pushover um, stand up for yourself she's not one to stay quiet so I guess that could be a blessing and a curse to not get not be a pushover because you always want to stand up for yourself but maybe we go too far in on that sometimes but um to be a strong woman in life as a whole learn to to love be happy animals people the environment um i've always been a nature person um a little bit more quiet which is odd that i'm doing this interview uh, so I've just learned to be happy, calm. There's no point in being angry when you don't have to be. What do I want my legacy to be? I, I just want to be a positive role model to whoever I talk with, if it's 
my nieces and nephews, if they want to go into the sciences or whatever they want to go into, I want them to be able to see me as a role model. Um, they can come to me for advice or if they have questions or if they're having a bad day, see me and my cleaning, my sea otter cleaning tips and guidelines and protocols and things I've helped with um, through the 14 years I've worked there um, be able to be useful for whoever takes my place or for scientific aides that we hire or colleagues. Um, I just want to be able to have my work be useful to, um, to, to other people to colleagues.